I'm Rachel from Offroad CC and today I'm going to help you find out exactly what kind of bike packer you are and also give you some hints and tips about packing for the trip. With the help from our friends over at Decathlon, it's time to look at the ideal kit for all three types of bike packing and then help you decide what's the best option for you. First up though, I think we need to address what is bike packing? So for me, it's going on a ride, carrying everything you need to survive overnight and be totally self-sufficient. So of course, you'll need a bike that's up for the job. You'll need food, cooking equipment, and also gear to keep you warm and dry overnight. Plus all the snacks and tools that you'd need to fix your bike in a problem, and possibly some lights to light up the way too if it gets dark before your camp stop. So what is the ideal bike for a bikepacking adventure? Well, of course, you can ride anything with two wheels, but I've got a Decathlon Riverside Touring 920 here. It's a typical looking gravel bike with the kind of geometry, tire clearance and frame features that I'd look for in an all-round gravel and adventure bike. So the frame itself gets a classic 71.5 degree head angle and there's a 73 degree seat angle and there's four sizes in the range. That means it'll fit riders from 155 centimeters all the way up to Decathlon say 201 centimeters tall. All bikes get 29er wheels to help smooth out the bumps in the trail. Plus, like you can see here, 2.25 inch Swalby Thunderbird tires, which offer better traction than something skinnier. The bike that we have here is kitted out with a 1x11 SRAM rival group set. So whilst one by group sets might not offer the gear range on the road for speed, so you won't be keeping up with a peloton, they are great for dealing with muddy conditions in relatively quiet circumstances too. Plus it's one less mech to go wrong with just that rear one. Elsewhere on the riverside is a wide flare bar, which is size specific. And also interestingly, a Shimano Dior XT Dynamo hub with a USB charging port built into the stem. So that'll charge your lights, GPS devices or phones as you ride, which is perfect for overnighters and not get any battery anxiety. In terms of kit, this bike gets all the rack mounts you could want. There are mounts in the frame for bags, bottles, and there's mounts on the fork for cages and dry bags too. Plus you can use panniers if you want to. We probably wouldn't recommend them for off-road riding, but the option is there. So I'm gonna start with the kind of bike packing where you go light and fast. And to find out if that's you, I reckon you should ask yourself the following questions. Do you want to carry a stove and cooking gear? And do you care about sleeping without a tent? If the answer is no to both, then you're probably heading down the lightweight route. Before I go much further, there are lots of bags that you can fit onto a bike for all types of bike packing. The main load carriers will usually consist of a handlebar bag, a seat pack and a frame pack. You don't want the steering to feel too heavy, so I try to keep lighter weight items like sleeping gear up the front on the handlebars. Then the seat pack tends to contain clothes, food and stoves if you're taking them. Things that you'll need quickly, like snacks and tools, will go in your frame back so they're super easy to reach. Light and fast riders will be concerned with keeping moving and moving quickly along their route. So when they're preparing, they'll look for lightweight bags and may even forego one of the bike bags. For that light and fast style, you'll pack essentials like tools, but these will be light and well thought out, so definitely no duplicates. You'll also pack some food, but no stove, or at least a very small one, and you'll be restricted to eating cold, so not cooking anything, like cold meats, sandwiches, etc., or finding a pub or cafe to stop at along the way. You'll also go on one change of clothes only, but we would definitely recommend packing a down jacket such as this that I'm wearing, so you can use that for sleeping in, you can use it if the weather makes a turn for the worse, and it's there when you're doing camp style duties in the evening. At that point, when you're using it for bad weather, it actually becomes an item of safety gear, not just clothing. Light and fast sleeping options are usually a really lightweight sleeping bag and a bivvy. Some riders will also carry a thin inflatable mattress too for comfort, and some might forgo the bivvy and just opt for a minimalist tent or a tarp rigged up with a pole or your two bike wheels. If this kind of minimalist riding doesn't sound like a whole bundle of laughs to you, then you probably find you fall into the middle ground of bike packers, 
which is probably just like me, I reckon. I'm happy to carry a little more and make life on the road that little bit more comfortable. Generally, I will pack all three bags, so a handlebar bag, a frame bag, and a seat pack. It is also worth thinking about swapping a handlebar bag for two fork cages and the dry bags on them, but make sure they are evenly packed and weight distribution is even over the fork. So, what do I pack in all these bags? Well, up front is my sleeping gear. So there's a sleeping bag, there's that inflatable mat I told you about, and that's pretty much it. That's as heavy as I probably want to make the front bag. It's a bag that is tough to get into on the move, so it's wedged between your drops. So don't be tempted to put extra layers in there too, unless you can be sure you're not gonna want them in a hurry. You can use a proper handlebar bag strapped to the handlebars or any dry bag and compress your kit into it and then attach that with just some straps. So moving down the bike into the frame bag, there will be my tools, snack, wallet, and perhaps my phone too, if I'm not carrying it on top of the top tube in a top tube bag. These are all essential items that I'll need on the move. If the bike I'm using won't take a frame bag, so if it's an e-gravel bike, then I would swap this out for a lightweight backpack. As most gravel bikes will accept some sort of frame bag whilst also fitting two water portals, then a backpack mostly shows its face on the more mountain bike bikepacking trips. Out at the rear in my seat pack is my tarp, tent pegs, there's a length of parachute cord to rig up that tarp, a stove, coffee and my food. So for cooking purposes, a gas stove is probably better to start off with, allowing you a little more flexibility with your cooking. Then add in simple aluminium pots and that'll finish off the kit. So I use this kind of stove with a pot that fits on top of the gas elements and those gas elements in this pot shield from the wind slightly but you can get super small and light stove attachments which attach directly to the gas so that'll save you a bit of space. Usually it's dehydrated food sachets because they're simple and easy to pack and they make great use of the space and you don't end up with squashed food. Also at the back, yep, we're still filling that bag, is a spare pair of Lycra chamois, a fresh pair of socks, because how good do fresh socks feel? A waterproof, that down jacket if I'm not wearing it, and a pair of thermal leggings, which I'll sleep in at night. It's definitely worth taking something like that to get out of your Lycra overnight. For one or two days in the saddle, in weather that I know is gonna be fairly good, this is all the spare clothes that I take. This midweight setup is flexible too, so it can be adapted if you're planning to stay in B&Bs, and that makes it lighter and faster too. You could, if you're staying in a B&B, feasibly scrap all the sleeping and cooking gear, and then you can swap that space out for extra layers or changes of clothes. That's if you have your overnight stops well planned and booked in in advance. So moving on from here, depending on the weight of your tent and the amount of extra gear you want to take, you could fall into the category of heavyweight bike packer for want of a better way of putting it. This is probably those if you're planning a multi-day expeditions where you really will need to fend for yourself and be away from towns for quite a while. You could take a one-man tent such as this, plus a sleeping bag, a sleeping mat, and all of the kit and spares we've just mentioned. You'll need to pack that handlebar with your sleeping bag, and then probably strap the tent to the front of this. Or perhaps if you're using fork leg cages and dry bags, you can use them to store extra gear. Out the back, your seat pack will be filled with food, that stove, all the cooking gear and your spare layers. You might want to think about a larger frame bag that fills the full triangle of your bike so you can store more and more in there without any wasted space. If you do choose to do that though, you'll need to have a think about how you're carrying water and make some other arrangements for it. Perhaps again, you could have a small light pack that is literally just for water, so it won't weigh you down, um, but it does have all that water on to keep you hydrated. There are other ways to sleep light inside a tent. So either grab a buddy and a two-man tent and then divide the parts across both of your bikes and packs, half each. It'll lighten the load for both of you and you can also strap awkward things like tent poles to your top tube with some additional straps. The other option is to use something made for the purpose of being tent shaped, but it's using just one slightly off center carbon pole to hold the whole thing up. There are some that give a full 360 degrees of protection for the elements, but are still under 400 grams in weight. So that's not including the pole, but it's still super light. What else do you need to take? Well. 
Firstly, lights for emergency purposes. So this bike has lights fitted, but they're not gonna help me see, but they will help me be seen in an emergency. So I'd recommend also taking a small front light too. About 700 lumens will see you through, and you'll be able to use it at campsites, at your camp stop, or for those late night toilet stops. Plus, also in an emergency, if you're running late, then you can use it to navigate. You'll also need a reliable GPS or a map or both. It's simple this one, don't get lost, it ruin the fun. You'll also need some pedals and shoes too. I like Crank Brothers Candy Clipless pedals because they shed the mud really well. And then I just use these with a cross country style mountain bike shoe. Use shoes that you know are comfy and use pedals that you're used to clipping into and out of, just to save any faff or any problems with ill-fitting shoes. If you have room, you might want to pack a small pair of lightweight shoes or flip-flops. Something like flip-flops you can easily strap to the outside of your bag so you can get out of your riding shoes at night. If you have room for a first aid kit, either on your own or between the group of you, then it's probably a good idea to carry a simple one. So things like triangle bandages, then some bandages to stem any bleeding and other necessities like paracetamol. Hopefully you won't need it, but it's better to be safe than sorry. By now, I hope you've probably matched yourself and the type of trip you have planned to the type of bike packing that is most suited to it. It'd be great if you let me know in the comments where you're going and whether you're going light and fast, somewhere in the middle or really loaded with gear. There's always lots to do when you're organised for a bikepacking trip. So is there anything I've missed? Or do you have some tips that you found on previous trips that you could share with us? Let me and the others know in the comments below as well. Other than that, I just want to say thanks very much for watching and I hope you have a great trip. Catch you soon.